Well, let's get you updated on our green trade. We'll start with the corn market activity. Our quotes are from Bar Chart. Here we go. Which way is corn going today? Ooh, it's going down by just a penny. We have December at 684 and a half, three cents from our low of the day in that corn market. Well, let's check out our soybeans. What are we doing here? We have November soybeans five cents lower at 1456 and a quarter. Having a hard time really getting much traction here today on that soybean market. Keep in mind, we did have the weekly export sales numbers that came out this morning. We'll talk about them in a little bit. They were not anything to write home about. On the wheat in Chicago, December down three cents. We're at 901 and a quarter. Now we're down just two and a half cents. I had a low of 891 and then bounced a little bit after that. Meanwhile, Tim Ross was just talking about the uh, hard red winter wheat being planted out in the Central Plains right now. And you have the December hard red wheat now a penny and a half lower at 965 and a half. If that rain hits prime growing areas, that could be helpful to maybe get that crop started. Don't know if it's going to cover all the areas, though. Now, on the spring wheat market here in Minneapolis, we have December down three at 961 and a quarter. On the cotton, new crop December is now quoted at 95.88, and now we're down 104 points off of our earlier high last night of 97.77. Kind of a big turnaround there again. We're joined by Ted Seifert of Zaner Ag Hedge. He's located in Chicago. All right, kind of a down day here in the grain markets. Overall, it just acts tired. Ted, what do you read into that? Yeah, Marlon, you know, a lot of stuff going on in the last 24 hours. We had the Fed decision yesterday. They raised three quarters of a point, which wasn't a shock. In fact, that was what the market was expecting. But it was the language that came after that, suggesting another big interest rate hike again between now and the end of the year. Uh, market didn't like that. Well, stock market didn't like that. We ended up the day down very sharply in the stocks yesterday. And so far today, we are following through to the downside. Now, Crude oil has been able to find some footing and is up a little bit on the day, but well off its highs. So you have markets as a whole really trying to figure out uh, all of this and where we where we should go going forward. But I, you got to say, you look over that stock market and you feel, oh boy, we're we're headed to some very interesting times, right? I, you know, we're headed towards those those June lows, uh, which are not far away now at this point, and you feel like if you get to them, we're probably going to break through. So. Uh, that doesn't leave a very good taste in your mouth as far as commodities are concerned. You look at the dollar index, made a new high here today, uh, up over 110. Oh boy, that shouldn't be very good news for commodities. So, yep, it, it's coming at a time of year where the seasonality for grains should be lower. Although, you know, we just are digesting the idea that this crop had gone backwards uh, pretty aggressively in the last three, four weeks uh, of, of its growing season. And now that we're beyond a weather market, now that we have these sort of lower estimates for uh, soybean yield in particular, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. You know, I, we're trying to balance the, the somewhat bullish supply side fundamentals for soybeans and to some extent corn versus the broader picture, possibly rather negative uh, demand side uh, macros like, you know, lower stock market, sh uh, shrinking economy, maybe some less demand out there. So it's a very difficult time frame. And you've got very indecisive markets because, because of it. We've been on both sides of unchanged today. Now, just down a little bit, kind of waiting for the next signal or, or trigger uh, for, for some direction. Okay, well, Ted, we'll come back in a moment and we'll take a look at our livestock trade as well. Our guest, Ted Seifert, will have more after this. Well, now let's take a look at our livestock trade and let's go back to Ted Seifert and talk about this. Uh, we were talking during the break here, Ted, about the uh, situation there's a lot of angst about the situation like with ukraine uh, a lot of uh, posturing if you will by russia and, and uh, putin doing some saber rattling the other day and we can't forget about the fact that uh, china would really love to make a move on taiwan at some point also there's a lot of uh, really iffy stuff going on out here that we have yeah. to try and navigate and what if uh, what if we go into a full blown global recession? I mean, overall, I mean, is that is that a net bad thing for all the ag commodities, or would that be a net good thing? What do you think? You know, that's a really good question, Marlon, because of two sides of the equation, right? For one, for grains, you know, that probably means that this this uh, export corridor that the U uh, that the Ukraine is is has right now that goes away. 
Um, it also probably means that nobody, at least from the Western world, is taking any Russian grain. Uh, so that goes away. But then you think, OK, uh, global conflict. Um, again, if things escalate in Ukraine, you would think that China would seize that opportunity to go into Taiwan. It's kind of surprising they haven't done that already, uh, which would really have a big, big problem for our exports to China. That's our, our that's our main thing. I mean, they, as far as soybeans are, are concerned, they export, what, 98 million metric tons of soybeans a year compared to the second highest importer, which is the UK or uh, the uh, Europe as a whole. Uh, and that's like 18 million metric tons. It's not even close. So we lose that business. We're going to be back to the idea of having, you know, six, seven hundred million bushel carryovers in soybeans and, you know, three hundred three billion bushel carryover uh, in corn. That would be really very negative. And again, the global economy, if that's sharply lower, that's just a demand killer right there. So, yeah, that would be really bad, I think. Um, some people would argue that, you know, war makes for good economies. Uh, but that was really back in the day when we had to use a whole lot of troops and pay people money and build a lot of things. Nowadays, you're you're building technology and things that can, well, one push of a button really takes care of a lot of business, uh, unfortunately. So I don't know if this wartime economy thing is is the same as it was back in, in you know, World War I and World War II. Uh, so I, I don't know if that argument is very valid. My take on the situation would be very bearish for the global economy, very bearish for our grain trade, especially if China gets involved in Taiwan, and we do as well. Uh, I really don't want to see that happen. And so, you know, you look at the stock market today being down. We talked about that. Um, it's giving cattle a hard time, giving hogs a bit of a hard time too. sort of a risk off trade there. But I've, I've contended for a little while now that I think if we continue to put pressure on the stock market, one of the best things of the bunch is going to be that hogs market because of that substitution for the higher price protein when we go to the grocer's counter and and decide that we're going to spend a little bit a little bit less on our protein yeah. and maybe buy some pork chops instead of that ribeye. Yeah, great point. Uh, let's look at these prices here and on the live cattle right now. Basically, the entire livestock complex under a little pressure here. We have the October down 55 cents at 145.32 right now. <clears throat> on the uh, feeder cattle market here, uh, similar action. October down 47 at 178.75. However, you have November down a dollar five, and on lean hogs down with December down 27 at 86.17. Thanks, Ted, for the comments today and interesting stuff. Ted Seifert of Zener Ag Head. Janet, back to you.